What do we want our downtown to look like? What Brewer needs is, is businesses, people paying taxes. I believe people are looking to basically get back to what they had years ago and bring it back home. One of the big ideas or big reasons for doing this is eventually building up our tax base. It's got potential for the downtown Berwick area. I think people are just really excited to, to have a downtown feel here in the town of Berwick. But I think it's going to be an exciting uh, next five to seven years. Some place where people want to come to and visit. The small town of Berwick on the Salmon Falls River in southwestern Maine has a hole at its heart. For ten years, the site of a former leather tannery has remained vacant, filled with hazardous wastes in the center of town. Originally part of Kittery, Maine, Berwick was settled about 1631 and called Kittery Commons or Kittery North Parish and later Unity. In 1713 it was incorporated by the Massachusetts General Court as Berwick before Maine became a state in 1820. South Berwick was set off from Berwick in 1814 and North Berwick in 1831. The town was settled by farmers and millwrights. The Salmon Falls River provided power for lumber mills and shoe factories. There were many small leather tanneries. Manufacturing operations began on the prime tanning site as early as 1877, and it has been occupied by a tannery, wool pulling works, a sash and door manufacturer, a reed manufacturer a carriage manufacturer, an oil company, a laundry facility, a shoe factory, and a lumber company. In 1935, Morris Kaplan brought prime tanning to Berwick. Kaplan, a Russian immigrant, had started prime tanning in 1910 in Woburn, Massachusetts. Later, his son Leonard Kaplan and then his grandsons Michael and Stephen Kaplan ran the plant. Over the years, the Berwick facility grew to 200,000 square feet of production, research and development, and office space. By the end of the 20th century, prime tanning employed 750 people. The economics of the leather tanning industry changed and prime tanning went bankrupt and closed in 2008, putting 150 people out of work, depriving a town of its major employer and leaving 11.7 acres of tired industrial buildings empty in the middle of town. In 2014, the town of Berwick acquired the prime tanning property due to owed back taxes. The property was full of hazardous wastes. Growing up in Berwick, prime tanning was basically the center of town. Not only was it physically the center, it also was the largest employer. It, you no, know, gave a lot of you no, know, donated a lot of money in, to the town through different projects. Is a lot of uh, volunteer firemen worked at the tannery, and when an alarm would go out, the tannery would allow them to go on their calls, and so that was a big help to the town. My grandfather's name was Morris Kaplan from what they used to call Poland, Russia. We're not exactly sure where, what town it was. <laughs> and ended up in Massachusetts, and he started working as a young man. I think he went to the sixth grade in, at, in the shoe factories in, in Lynn, Mass., which was a, the shoe capital of New England at the time. And started working there years and years. And then eventually, around 1910 or so, ended up getting out into the Woburn area and started collecting junk and was a peddler, which so many of the immigrants at that time, Jewish immigrants especially, started in the junk business and, and he peddled. And he worked with a company called, I think it's E.F. Cummings in Woburn, it was a tannery, and he would go in and buy leather scraps, you know, and he, he so they, what kind of leather do you want? And he, he said, I don't know, I just want leather, I think I can sell something with leather. So he would take the scraps from the tannery and add that to his junk business and that's how he started getting involved with leather. So he ended up buying the company, I believe it was in, I, I want to say 1918, 1914, something like that. And, and that's how he started in his leather business. My grandfather learned of Berwick and eventually looking for labor, looking for obviously water, which the river here provided, tons of water. 
And that's when they bought the old, I believe it was a woolen mill japanning plant. A japanning plant was patent leather. And that's what it was when he decided to buy it and come up here, which I think was in the early to mid-30s. I know my father started working here in 36, 37. And uh, so it was basically labor, more abundant labor, and obviously the water. Well, my grandfather passed away in 47. My father was Leonard Kaplan, and um, similar to me, he always loved the inside of the tanner. He, he, he you know, hated sales, you know, <laughs> just liked to be inside and, and worked with the guys and knew that business. And uh, so he, he ran it till he got ill. He had dementia in, in those last years. I started in Prime in 1973 and um, until 2001 and um, worked at um, most of the drying operations, pasting, toggle, conditioning, and I was a lead person for most of the years towards the end. I was there 28 years total. One of the problems was is that it was Berwick's sole large employer. And over the years, the town became more and more dependent on it. As we built our water plant based on the tannery, we built our sewage plant based on the tannery. And when that closed, that put a real burden on both those projects is because now they were handling a much lower volume than they were designed for. And there's been a, a, a lot of problems going on with both of those. Well, I was on the board at, at, at the time the Kaplan's sold it. And, and Lenny Kaplan was there during the Depression. I don't remember it because I was too young. But I've heard since then, he had said that those people that worked for him during that Depression, and he had times evidently when I think it was hard for him to pay them, they were never to be fired. They would always have a job. And, that, and, and, the, and his two sons who took over after him, that, that, that they did. They were very honest people. And the Kaplan's did... A lot, sometimes a lot for Berwick. I remember when they gave it back when a thousand dollars towards education was a lot of money. They gave the valedictorian of the of the class a thousand dollars towards their education, and uh, and 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 the boys kept that right up till the end. When we started our historical society, they gave us some money. But when we built the library, they gave us a hundred and fifty thousand, uh, and. And then, before it was, uh, they paid so much a year. Before it was really all paid off, they sold. Well, the new company did not honor that, but the Kaplan boys did honor it themselves, out of, a, out of their own their own money. So, you know, the, the Kaplans were g g financially good to Berwick. The people that worked there. Um, a lot of the people were from the area and, you know, they were good people to work for. Um, it was a great family-owned company. Um, it was, you know, they would take care of you if, if you needed to, you know, have some, you know, or had issues. But at one point we had over a thousand people working here. But the tannery was, was a place where a lot of people worked and they, they brought up families. They, brought up good families. I'm thinking that they must have made good wages because they certainly seemed to have plenty and, they, and, and their children did too, so. <laughs> I didn't think they would close forever. When uh, the railroad station over there, when, when the cars came in loaded with the, the hides and they, and they had to unload them and they'd come across the bridge and Oh God, dripping everything, it, that really wasn't that nice, and there was an odor to it. Back then, Berwick probably was, what, 1,200 people and all, you know, there wasn't, I mean, we, you knew everybody in town, and in my opinion, they, they, they were good corporate citizens. I'm the overall project manager of the, of the, of the entire cleanup that's, that's going on. These are the contaminants are left for the legacy of running a, uh, a tanning operation for more than a hundred years. We have things like chromium in the ground in, in the soil and a little bit in the groundwater. We have um, fuel-related contaminants 
And that, those are the contaminants that left the property. So they had big underground storage tanks that fueled the, uh, their, their boilers. There's some leather hides still on the property. There are chlorinated solvents. So, so you clean something, a degreaser, you know, if you, if you have those and you dump those in the ground, you end up with these things we call chlorinated solvents. Um, this, this is perchloroethylene and trichloroethylene. Those are the two contaminants that we've detected on the property. Just our customers left. Our customers left. And we always made quality. And we had higher prices than most. And as the quality driver changed to less expensive motivation, that was difficult for us to achieve because for all those people that said they thought they never thought the tannery would close, that was our intent. So we kept the tannery open for many years. In 2003, we had initially planned on closing it, but my brother and I and the management just didn't feel comfortable. We thought we could make it, so we kept it open. And um, the other reason was that we, we moved our finishing operation in order to expand our coloring operation here. And I think that overhead, that was a very expensive project and, and that was a burden also. The prime site uh, work started after um, the prime uh, company as a whole uh, declared bankruptcy. Uh, and they closed their doors, if I remember correctly, around 2010. Um, at that point, they were in a, a bankruptcy process. Um, and had to involve the town of Berwick because about $270,000 in back taxes was owed. So the bankruptcy court worked with a gentleman by the name of Mark Cahaya. Uh, he set up a company called the Fund of Jupiter, um, and the bankruptcy court uh, worked with the town to start doing a cleanup, which is quite an involved project for asbestos and chromium and, and a number of different other awful chemicals. Um, so the funding that was owed the town, the taxes was uh, for about the 270,000 was used for um, matching funds for the grants that we were are planning on uh, applying for at that time. The other problem with the tannery is, is like a lot of big companies, a lot of big entities in the middle of towns and cities, is when an adjacent property becomes available and goes on the market, they bought it. And so over the years, they just kept buying the next empty building, the next empty lot, and incorporating it into the tannery. And what that did is that ate up a lot of the existing buildings in the downtown. I, I can't remember, but I think at one point we had, it was like 36 separate buildings, you know, over the years. My father, would, as he needed more space, along Sullivan Street, there were some homes that used to be there where the parking lot used to be, or parking lot is, and he would buy the homes and then they, he would literally move them so people could stay in their homes, but must have gone up the street either on Hubbard Road or, you know, way up on Sullivan Street or something like that. But that, over the years, he bought six to ten homes that kind of lined the front. And, you know, when I grew up in the 60s, you know, we had the post office downtown, we had Drew and Bills downtown, we had the IGA grocery store downtown, and you know, Johnny Bell's hardware, we had a lumber store in town. So a lot of those small businesses, when they started going out, is the tannery just acquired those properties, so now there was no, no other business would go in there. And that's one of the problems that we've had here. And then when the tannery closed finally in 2008 is now all of a sudden it was a big shock to the town. It not only was the employment from the tannery gone, but all the associated jobs that went around it with the trucking and the garages and things like that, those are all gone now. And plus we lost a big piece of the town's tax revenue is now all of a sudden, instead of an ongoing business that we could you know, rate, we could tax at a higher level, now we have vacant buildings and it's not worth as much. So now it became a blight. The process of the development of the prime site has been going on for a long time. And I know that's frustrated a lot of people. Is, uh, <clears throat> but this is an unusual. Is the whole 
process of getting the site clean and ready to be used was a three or four year process. And after that, it's a matter of finding the right developers to put a project forward. Is So the original owner, the funded Jupiter, wasn't a developer. Is you no, know, he was a money man. Is he had investments in the tannery, and that's how he ended up with it. Is you know, and since he wasn't a developer, he didn't need to develop it either, and he could just sit on it and just keep paying taxes, and that's not in the best interest of the town. Um, so that was set up, and uh, they applied um, in 2014 uh, for their first uh, grant. Um, which was rejected. Yeah, they did not receive it. Uh, so they hung in there. Uh, they worked with the Vision, Vision Berwick group um, here in town uh, and they uh, applied the second year. Uh, and they were, at that time, they were working with an uh, environmental company called Crideri and Weston and Sampson, uh, who involved a gentleman from Berwick, uh, Rick Sampson. Uh, and they worked on this grant um, and uh, received it in 2015, and it was awarded uh, about 600000 uh, for the cleanup. That was a start. Um, in 2015, uh, I, this is uh, when I came on board uh, to Berwick, um, I uh, was asked if I would consider coming here by several different people, um, and I looked at what was going on in Berwick. And as a town manager, I got very excited because I saw uh, a community that had been pulled together uh, in a number of different areas and were trying to make some dramatic changes to their downtown and, uh, and, and grow the business community so we had a, a downtown. One thing I thought about when they closed, what about the hazardous waste sale? So that began our work uh, with Mark Cahaya from the Jupiter uh, Crideri and Weston and Samson to start applying for more than just one grant but a number of grants to clean up the 7.9 acre parcel and the parking lot across the street along with what they call the Blue Sort Building which was a separate grant by itself. With Brownfield's cleanup grants from the Environmental Protection Agency and a public-private partnership with the Fund of Jupiter beginning in 2015, the town of Berwick worked with Credere Associates of Westbrook, Maine, and Weston and Sampson of Reading, Massachusetts to clean up the prime site of hazardous wastes. These wastes included asbestos, lead paint, and PCBs. The town of Berwick received three EPA Brownfields cleanup grants totaling $1.4 million for the work. The Fund of Jupiter provided a 20% match. Other tasks included asbestos abatement, select building demolitions, storage tank removal, soil removal, and the installation of a temporary cover on some areas. The Maine Department of Environmental Protection issued a certificate of completion for the cleanup in June 2018. And they started to work. It was a huge complex, You're almost eight acres of pretty much all building, um, and they proceeded to tear it down, which was dramatic in itself to watch, especially when the chimney came down. Uh, that was a real icon for the company. Um, it was here. and um, So they, they finished that project, uh, the cleanup of the main parcel, uh, two years ago, roughly. Uh, in 2018 uh, and 19. Uh, and they finished the parking lot this past year um, and they are finishing up the Blue Sort building as we speak. A downtown vision committee was appointed by the selectmen in 2013 to develop a downtown planning report with the help of town staff. That report became part of the town's comprehensive plan, the basis of planning for the former prime tanning site. The Downtown Vision Committee became Envision Berwick, which implements the comprehensive plan. 2013 is when Envision Berwick, or the Downtown Vision Group, first started going. Is They really spearheaded the effort to do something with the tannery. And it's through that effort that we eventually got into a private public partnership with the Fund of Jupiter and Mark Cahaya so that the town took over the property. And that way, 
we could apply for federal grants to clean it up where a private entity could not. And we were very fortunate. We, the first round of grants we applied for, we didn't get. And, but then the second round we applied and we had, we got that. It's a really important distinction. When we say clean up, what, we're, what, what, what we mean by that in the case of prime tanning is that we didn't remove a lot of contaminants. I think all in all, there was about 200 and, 200 and maybe 15 tons of contaminants that actually left the property. All the other contaminants are still on the property. And what you see over there when you look at the buildings and all the space between the buildings is all, all that rubble. That's clean concrete that was put down. And underneath that c clean concrete is the dirty contaminants that are there. And then the next year we got another grant, and the next year we got another grant. And, and that's basically unheard of. You no, know, and you no. Know, Berwick is really fortunate. And, uh, you know, over the course of the cleanup, we have got over $2 million in grant money to help clean that up. And that wouldn't have been possible if we had not entered this partnership. So that rubble forms a cover system. It separates those contaminants that are existing from the people that might use the property to do construction. So it's a, that's a temporary cover system. There's also a permanent cover system on the property. In the front of the property, closest to School Street, in that weird little intersection there, those contaminants have been permanently covered. We've made that little green space, which we wanted the, the public to be able to access part of the property, and that's why that's there. That's why the fence isn't going around that anymore. During all this process, the Envision Berwick group, some of the selectmen, uh, myself, we started asking businesses if they would uh, be interested in uh, working with a developer and coming here. And we had quite a bit of interest, which was kind of exciting. Um, uh, Mark Cahaya uh, really didn't have the time or the expertise to do the development project. Um, he was in and out of Berwick off and on. Uh, the, once the buildings were down, he was here um, quite a bit, uh, but still never really moved the project forward. He had uh, several different developers uh, approach him about uh, buying the property at that time, the numbers that were thrown out were pretty low, um, and, and Mark was not interested in giving it away. We, we did meet with several developers, and they all had great ideas. They were all very helpful in understanding our options. They came to the table with very different scenarios, but they also were very adamant in saying their way was the only way that they knew how the site could be redeveloped. But they also said that's the only way the site could be redeveloped. Again, it was the only way that they, with their technical ability, found their way to redevelop the site. We still, after uh, a number, a full year, Mark just didn't have the time. Um, and so we were talking to a number of different developers, uh, people that I know from Central Maine, um, who have done major projects like this, I uh, couldn't quite pique their interest. Everybody was busy. And what we really needed and what we searched for for a long time is a local contractor, a local developer that could buy the property in its entirety and develop it in one piece. And the reason we wanted to do that is we didn't want to have this as a piecemeal project where we have five or six different parcels owned by different People. I grew up in Gorham, Maine, um, and uh, I was able to watch uh, some projects there being done, and I was very curious. I saw the sign, Great Falls Construction, putting up some very nice uh, uh, buildings for business development. Um, and I kept watching this over the last year or two happening there in Gorham. Um, and it gave me an opportunity to question my family members. Who is this company? What can you tell me about them? I like what I see they're doing in Gorham. Um, I don't know much about them. So I learned more and, and uh, talked to uh, some of my uh, Board of Select people and, and Envision Berwick, James Bellissimo, and I said, I'm going to send them a letter and see if this is a project that they might be interested in. Great Falls Construction is in Gorham, Maine. Owned by Jonathan and Cynthia Smith, Great Falls has been building commercial projects 
private residences and multifamily affordable housing and doing historical restorations. In Gorham, Great Falls took an abandoned and dilapidated gas station and turned it into 109 Main Street, a multi-business retail location. But Great Falls has made the most impact in Gorham with Station Square, a five-story retail and residential center with the flavor of a historic train station. The ground floor has a bowling alley and office spaces, the upper floor has residential apartments, and the tower has a wine bar with live music. At the back is garage space for tenants. I think that with the Great Falls construction out of Gorham is uh, we've really found the people that are going to take the town's interests and meld it with their interests because they're developers, they're real estate people, they're a construction company. They need to make money. They can't afford to sit on this project for years and years. It, you know, they need to turn around and start you know, making their money back as soon as possible because you know, even if they don't develop it, it still has the property taxes that come into the town. One of the big ideas or big reasons for doing this is eventually building up our tax base to reduce our overall taxes. It's going to take a little while, but that's ultimately the reason why we're doing this. The more value we can put downtown, the more it will offset our taxes. That's that's one of the top reasons. Great Falls construction constitutes the, the best thing that the town could have stumbled into. This is referred to by a lot of people as the blue sort building, and it was used by prime tanning. Uh, for storage, for shipping, and for a lot of sort of ancillary functions that went on at the mill. Beneath this property, we found some contaminated soil that's got what we call polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons in it, PAH is they're referred to as, um, and then we, and underneath the slab of the building, we also found some volatile organic chemicals. To make this property safe for commercial use in the future, what we've done is we've, we did some excavation on the outside to remove that, those PAH contaminated soils. And um, those been, were, were physically removed and taken to um, a landfill for, for disposal. To, to clean up and make the building safe for occupant, occupancy, what we did is we poured a very thick epoxy re resin on the floor, as you can see. It's, um, it's a, it forms a moisture barrier and a uh, vapor barrier and keeps the volatile organic compounds from coming up through the concrete slab. In, in the front of the property here, there were lead contaminated soils and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon contaminated soils. And in the back, in several locations, there was uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon contaminated soils and some other metals that were back there. And what we did for a cleanup to address this contamination in most cases was we physically removed it and take, took it to a landfill for disposal. Uh, in the case of the soils here in the front, we couldn't get all of it, so we, uh, we worked with DEP and we installed an, what they call an engineered barrier system, similar to a cover system that's in the front of the, the main lot. This cover system consists of a marker layer and then eight inches of granular fill and then four inches of loam and seed. And in the back, it turns out that we got to commercial standards for some of this contamination, but there's still some residuals left. It can be used currently for commercial standards, but for not necessarily for residential. Because what they do in Gorm, what they have done in Gorham is, is uh, uh, quite amazing. It really fits what the community has wanted for years, and as it's been a number, probably 10 plus years they've been doing this, um, and the quality of their work is, is top notch. So I wrote them a two-page letter uh, and asked them if they would be interested in talking to us about this project. Years and years and years of refining what the community wants. But ultimately, us sending a letter to Great Falls Construction and them being able to see it within their time horizon and for them to sign an agreement to purchase it is very, very, very lucky. Um, and we're very fortunate to have them on board. I think what really piqued their interest more after we met them was that they saw that the people of Berwick was very, very supportive of this project and they wanted to see something happen. Um, so they came down uh, uh, after I sent a letter, the, probably two or three days later, uh, I got a phone call and they would like to sit down and talk with us, which was very, very exciting. So um, they showed up. 
probably three weeks later, we set up an appointment and uh, John Smith and Cindy Smith came and introduced themselves. And I had heard just a number of things about them that was very exciting. Uh, and who they were as just people and a family, because it's a family run business. So James, uh, Melissa, myself, um, the chairman, Tom Wright, uh, Rick Vandenberg, uh, we all sat down together and talked about what we're doing. Um, and they listened and they asked a lot of questions. And we sent them home with homework of all the studies and things that had been done. Um, and they left with a, a very positive attitude. They've proven they can do it. They've proven they can take an old gas station within a parking lot and build buildings that fit into the neighborhood. Remarkable work that they do. They've proven they, they can do large scale projects. They can do projects of all types. And they're a family run and owned company. And one of the most um, impressive things that I saw my first tour when I was there was the response of the workers there and the way that they reacted to John, Cindy, and Julie. Genuinely happy to see them, where it seemed like a really personal, great relationship. And, uh, and they said that they'd, they'd think about this project. They seemed to think it was pretty exciting what Lisbon or Berwick is trying to do. Um, and that started the process. Um, they contacted Mark Cahaya and started negotiating a price. And this took quite a while. Uh, I would say six to seven months before they finally agreed that they wanted to come here. They were very thoughtful. They, they asked us a lot of questions in between. We met with them several other times before they sat down and talked to Mark. And Mark, uh, he, they made Mark an offer. And here we are today with this project um, in the hands. They bought the property. Uh, they bought the parking lot, um, and right now they're considering buying the Blue Sort building. So the project, the downtown project, is very different than most developments uh, in town because of Section 6.4 in our land use ordinance. The process the company's following is a very, um, it's a community process, which it follow, that follows the, the mandates in our, in our ordinance. Section 6.4 of the Land Use Ordinance of Berwick provides for a village overlay district, a special zoning district, to promote the development of the prime site. The intent is to create a traditional pedestrian-oriented street pattern with a concise process for the design, review, and approval of structures. My name is Steve Eldridge, I'm the town manager. The first listening session for the residents of Berwick was held by the town and Great Falls Construction on November 6, 2019 at Town Hall. Um, thank you all for coming. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for coming down here. This is an exciting time for Berwick. and one of the biggest nights I know of in Berwick that's gone on for decades and decades. The town got its first look at the owners of Great Falls Construction, John and Cindy Smith. My name is John Smith. I um, started Great Falls Construction in 1988 and have been doing construction and development since then. Uh, we're out of Gorham and we're uh, actually, uh, as you just heard, Steve did write us a letter a while back and we came down and met with it. Um, some people here in town and heard about the project. One thing led to another. I think it took close to a year as we contemplated and looked at things and sort of tried to understand what was what had been happening down here and and what the opportunity was. So we're now excited really to be one spoke in the wheel of progress here. Residents of Berwick who have lived with prime tanning being closed and inactive for a dozen years expressed their views of what they wanted to see built on the site. Uh, I have children that are in the sports for uh, the rec program, uh, soccer, basketball, and we really need a rec center. Three or four rooms, however small, for a genuine historical society. You guys can work with a lot of local businesses. We have a lot of um, small entrepreneurs here in Berwick. We're a small town. We do a lot of our um, winter markets here with a lot of our local businesses, and I'd like to see us trying to create a space for them. 
A lot of times when you put in a lot of larger developments with a lot of housing in it, sometimes that can overburden the school system and the tax revenues that we may take in would be depreciated by the um, individuals using that particular school system. I just hope that when you're considering the large scale development package that you put together that it doesn't become exclusively self-centered, looking inward at the package, but that it incorporates the outer line pieces that are valuable to the town that have been there for a long time. Uh, one of the amenities that I think that we really do need downtown is a, is a good market, good place to buy some fresh cuts of meat, some good veggies, uh, possibly a co-op. Speaking for my wife, one thing she does want is an Italian bakery. And I'll leave it there. <laughs> It seems to me one of the things that we would benefit most from in the area where the tannery was is a restaurant that has breakfast and lunch and dinner. My question is if uh, your organization is going to work with companies like Maine and Company to look to possibly bring some larger employers to in a site like yours. And I also feel really good that you, you folks are local, that you're you know from Maine and that that, that, that means a lot to have uh, an investment made in our town by somebody, by a company that is, you know, part of our state and has an interest in, in seeing Berwick become what we hope it can be. Right now, there's nothing except, you know, a sub shop and a humble farm. We need a vibrant downtown. My personal opinion is I just like to bulldoze it down and get some light manufacturing in there or some 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 place where the local people can work with a livable wage and uh, uh, help with the tax base here in town. But one thing you want to take into consideration, downtown Burke has a parking problem. So whatever you put there, you've got to make sure there's parking for people or it won't go in anyway. Cindy and Joe and I will be here after the meeting tonight if anyone has any questions until they shut the lights off. So, uh, and as most people know, they've been here to ask questions of the public. They're very thoughtful about what our community here wants. And, uh, and if you go to their website and see some of the things that they've done in Gorham, uh, you'll be excited to have them be uh, the company that is going to help move Berwick forward. So in this early stage, the interest we've found in the project is, has been really positive with the community. People are really excited for what uh, might happen behind us right here. And so we're also really excited uh, that things are getting started and we're really, really excited for, for things to get rolling. Um, specifically, I think people are just really excited to, to have a downtown feel here in the town of Berwick. They are required to come up with a site plan and throughout the process, they check in with town staff. So they check in, they'll be checking in with myself and Lee J to make sure that their concepts are in line with our ordinance. And I have no doubt, based off of their past work, that they're more than capable of meeting the spirit of our ordinance. Because Maine has a relatively small economy, Great Falls construction is diversified, and Smith says he likes challenging projects. So this design was intended to be inspired by a traditional train station, be on Railroad Avenue, and you know, with the trains going by, I know that's not really a fire up your thought, but we, uh, you know, to, to, to hit it, we really had to work hard to fit what we need for today's standards for construction and accessibility. Uh, and we really wanted to put some architectural detail into it. So John and Cindy are the good people, and I'm just going to continue in following your path because it's quite one heck of a path to follow. I'm so excited with the way this has come together. The Great Falls has been wonderful to work with. We're so grateful. They, they brought our vision to life. This far surpasses my thoughts. Not because of the actual building, which is very handsome, but because of all the people who continue contributing to this vision of ours. You ready? Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On top of their investment in the property, they'll be paying the taxes. So is um, that's one of the things that we really looked for. And I, I think that we really, you know, you know, made a really good connection with these people. So they can build good buildings. They also manage the buildings. They obviously have the financial capacity, and, and they, ha they keep the community in mind, and they're super, super creative. Some early ideas uh, we've had for Prime have really been, 
I guess more or less um, dictated by the community listening sessions. We've really we've had three listening sessions with the community, and uh, we have some update sessions coming up as well. Check the Facebook page. Envision Burke was a group that was formed uh, prior to the closure of, of the bankruptcy. Uh, it was started by uh, uh, Serena, uh, James Bellissimo, uh, Frank Underwood, Paul Bovere, um, and his wife Pat, uh, and several other people. And they and the board members, the current board members, Tom Wright, uh, Mark Pendergast, uh, have all been very active with this group. Um, they're the ones that have really pushed this project forward. Honestly, Envision Berwick, I see them kind of graduating and growing up to becoming a downtown development authority, which is a, it's a nonprofit that is specifically designed to support the downtown businesses. Maybe Envision Berwick, so Envision Berwick's goal is to implement the town's comprehensive plan. So at some point, there should always be a committee. Maybe Envision Berwick stays Envision Berwick, but at some point, some facet of Envision Berwick should grow up to become an actual nonprofit that has an executive director, that has a board, that becomes a little bit more formalized as an economic development of power in, in the region. And the project was, what do we want our downtown to look like? And what do we want to, how do we want to see it develop? And these are the questions that they had out there, and they did a number of surveys uh, for the people in Berwick, um, and we got a great response. I mean, it gave us a real uh, direction of what people were looking for, what they wanted to see happen here. Envision Berwick is um, always open to the public, and there's other opportunities to get involved. Um, there's multitudes of ways of getting involved. If you have an idea or something you want to see, uh, just bounce it off us and we can see what we can do to, to help you and at least show you the way to make it happen. Or at the very least, I can steal your idea and make it happen and take credit for it. Berwick needs, Berwick needs businesses. Because I remember when I grew up in Berwick, because it was before the sales tax, and we had four grocery stores and uh, the barber shop, uh, insurance, because uh, insurance offices, and and there was in the hardware store. There was a lot of business, right, right downtown. What the intent is to go back to what we probably had a hundred years ago: small businesses, grocery stores, doctors' offices, maybe a dentist. Uh, the post office might come back downtown. You had a little hardware store. Um, those are the things that basically we used to have in our community. And if you look at other communities, uh, if you're making a certain destination run, and if I may use that example, if I'm heading to uh, Rocky's Hardware in Dover, I could also go tanning next door. I could also have a, some keys made at Rocky's, go get some groceries, go to Hanush Jewelers, which is right there, get the car washed, and then end up at Roger's Pizza for a pizza and a beer, all within 1,500 feet. So if you look at that concept, I believe people are looking to basically get back to what they had years ago and bring it back home instead of going to the malls. There was Johnson's, Garvin's, uh, Nationwide, and, 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 and Vic and Bertha went to us. We had four. They've met with and will continue to meet with businesses, and the exact type of tenant will shape how the buildings either stay up or are demolished. So for example, while the buildings that are existing aren't pieces of art by any means, they can be rehabbed into something that does look nice or does look like it could fit into the, the, to the downtown. And the cheapest and most sustainable building is an existing building. And if they can rehab a building, that means lower rents, which means more mom and pop shops or artist studios, more creative, um, pro projects they can take more risks on because they have less capital involved with it. So Great Falls' interest in, in the project is not just the construction. Our, our, our logo is constructing with the purpose and we're a family-owned company with uh, 45 really talented employees and we, we love community. We love community building. It's what we do. It's what we're passionate about. And I can honestly say that 
everybody's on the same page. And, and this is one of the things that I told them about Berwick. It's the one community I've ever seen work together where everybody's pulling in the same direction. And that is a unique experience uh, for a municipal manager as myself, who I've been in this business for 22 years, worked in a number of uh, towns. All facets um, within the downtown development need to be considered. And that's why this is about a year long process from start to finish. And the good news is that the process started at the uh, at Hall in Halloween. October 31st, they purchased the property and they've already held two listening sessions. We couldn't have asked for a better group. If I had a choice of picking anybody in the state of Maine to do this project, Great Falls Construction is, is the company. They really want the community feedback because there are decisions that they're going to make. They have ideas that they're going to, they're going to have, but there's also crossroad decisions that they can go either way. And if the community wants one way or the other, but they might as well do what the community, community wants. I see Envision Berwick as the guiding force behind, or the, the guiding group behind this development. Um, they have already started working uh, with uh, Julie Smith, who is the project manager and the daughter of John and Cindy Smith. Um, they're of the same age group. The first safeguard for the town is our building, building inspector, code enforcement officer. So while buildings are being constructed, she'll be on top of them, making sure that the buildings are constructed properly. Because that's really the first step. If a building is constructed properly, it's going to last longer. Um, other safeguards um, include the actual aesthetics and look and feel the buildings. After the tannery closed, and you know things had things had been sitting for several years. A, a group of people got together in town and started discussing what could be done to revitalize Berwick. And it was a very informal group to start with. And they had a couple of meetings, and out of that it became the Downtown Vision Committee. And that was a really a real really good collaboration across the spectrum of ages and backgrounds in Berwick, is we had you no know, retirees, engineers, school teachers, <clears throat> but we also had young people who were fresh out of college or some of them still in college that grew up in town and they wanted to do something to help. And that was the initial catalyst and that eventually involved, evolved into the Envision Berwick group. And the Board of Selectmen and Envision Berwick and, and the Planning Board continue to try to meet quarterly to, to see where we are and the progress we're making. But they have talked about uh, the lighting in the downtown area, uh, sidewalks, how, they, how large they're going to be, where they're going to go. You look at everything in, in a community from the signage. Signage should be, it should look good. It, you should be able to read it, so it should be functional, it should be aesthetically pleasing. Streetlights, infrastructure, is the infrastructure underground? Is it above ground? It's striking the difference if you start paying attention. We're hoping to put some, some of the infrastructure underground uh, downtown. Um, the streets should be walkable, and all that really means is the streets should be narrow enough and the crosswalk should be designed in a way where it's easy to get across and the, the, the person walking feels comfortable. We're hoping that Great Falls construction is going to try to closely follow what our downtown vision plan has been. Is we've had several you know, town meetings, we've had the charrette take place several years back, is Great Falls has had two listening sessions in Berwick to see what we have looked at. and. You know, hopefully is what we're going to see is a recreation of our downtown is, you know, the people complain about there nothing being downtown to come to. One of the things that they said to us was that they don't want a cookie cutter design. They've actually said that they don't know if one architect can do what they want to do because they want it to be a diverse architecture, a diverse 
landscape so that it doesn't look like it's a brand new development plopped down in the middle of town. So we have language in there that the buildings do have to fit in with the downtown fabric. What Great Falls Construction builds should feel like it fits, and it also should feel like it's been there. Wouldn't it be nice to just basically come and sit in the park down here with your Kendall and read a book on a bench? Hope everybody will be patient. Is that you know it's not going to please everybody. Is and just think it the revitalizing Berwick and bringing more life to town and making it some place where people want to come to and visit. What I'd like to tell the public is they have to be patient. These these projects take time, and 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 you want the developer to take their time to think through what they want and how they're going to get there. Um, this company made an, a very large investment in Berwick, and I think uh, you'll see that investment's going to pay off for all of us and for them. It's their business. Uh, but um, I think the public uh, will be very excited about what they see happening. And, and I hope you all stay on top of it and go to the website and watch what's happening because BCTV is there at all times covering what we do. You know, I know a lot of people are complaining because the building, the lot has sit, sitting there, but if we hadn't done that, all those buildings would still be sitting there. Or worse yet, is we could have had a major fire and taken out a good part of our downtown if that had burned. So is, I think it's been a very positive move on the town's part. Certainly, I think we will need to be patient going forward because there'll be times when it doesn't look like there's a lot happening. And I think the public should recognize when things don't look like they're happening, that's the time to understand that they're back in Gorham where their office is, and they're doing a lot of things that are essential to make that field work then happen. I, it's got potential for the downtown Berwick area, you know, between commercial, some light industry if possible, and um, residential. You know, this is, this is a good time. This is not every day, I mean, in 300 years that you get to do redo your entire downtown. So basically, if you look at the concept of this 10 acres of land, you're redoing your downtown. And, you know, it's slowly changing. You know, we have the brewery, we have the pizza place. And, you know, so things are starting to happen in the town hall, like the farmer's market and the lawn chairs on the, the music festivals on the lawn. You know, so things are starting to happen. But what we're hoping is, and talking with John and Cindy Smith about this, is I think they follow the same idea, is they're looking to recreate a village setting. What I think would be nice, but what, what Brewer needs is, is businesses, people paying taxes. Because, because right now our mill rate is quite high for a small town. The senior citizens in Brewer, because I'm sure there's a lot of them that has a hard time paying their taxes because they did not earn the big money that people are earning today. You know, it's been almost 18 years nothing's been done so it's it's time if you're working in portsmouth and if you're working in portland and so on and so forth when you're home you're home you don't want to go back over that bridge to portsmouth the grocery stores the coffee shops you know is the commuter parking with the navy yard you know we're hoping to capture some of those you know have you know places in this development that are going to be attractive to them so when they come in the morning before they get on the bus they stop in for a coffee and a newspaper and whatever and and when they come off they'll stop in and grab something at the market for a supper that night and think about this the town's people of berwick dished out twenty five thousand dollars and got back two million dollars in return with volunteers how can you not win that you know it, it's a win-win situation there's a lot more to happen there's a lot of good things that are going to come, and basically, we're going to be able to enjoy it and not have to drive 20 miles, hopefully, for some things. You know, the, it's been cleaned up. It's, it's ready to go. But we do need the businesses to help us with our, that, with, with our tax rate. I think when it comes down to, to prime tanning and, and watching what's going to happen, I think it's going to be an exciting uh, next five to seven years. 
of watching watching the activities. We've got, as we've seen from when Great Falls comes to town, you know, you can look them in the eye and talk to them and understand that they're serious about what they're going to do. And I think the best day for Berwick's history was the day that they acquired the property. I think it was, <coughs> I think it was Halloween when when the deal finally finished. And so Halloween 2019, I think we're going to look back hopefully in 10 years when we have a vibrant downtown and we will have the Smiths to thank. And so I, I want the one thing I do want to also say is that as a part of this, my our job now is to support what they're about to do. Those are the types of things that we really hope to revitalize our downtown and make it you know, more vibrant. And along with the development across the street that the private developers are going to be doing is we're looking as a town to get more grant money to redo our sidewalks, to redo our intersections, to make it more pedestrian friendly, to make it so that people want to stop in Berwick instead of just passing through. We really look forward to continuing to hear from the community. Thanks to those of you that have been involved in the conversation and uh, we're, we're, we're easy to find. Pick up the phone, call us if you have any questions or ideas. The process has built-in public listening sessions with Bowick residents. There have been three in-person listening sessions and three virtual listening sessions between November 2019 and October 2020. One thing that, uh, that I've noticed, which I think is, is great, more people are becoming involved in, in, in the town government and in what's going on, and, and, and I think, and I think that, that that's, that's a good, I think it's really good. And, and one thing that Berwick does have is they have the volunteer system. And I think we probably have one of the best group of volunteers. And, we, and in Berwick too, we have a lot of talented people who are educated in the problems that Prime had. And they, gave, they gave, have given their time freely. I hope it becomes what we used to consider Prime as a central point and a, a major player in the town. You know, one of the things that was great about being an owner was be able to give charitable work, whether it be to the library or the fire station. Moving forward, there always seems to be a cohesive continuity of the idea that we need to work as a community to revitalize Berwick and make it a place that people want to come and live in. Behind the purchase and development of the prime tanning site by Great Falls Construction is the work of the people of Berwick, spearheaded by Envision Berwick, a group of volunteers. The town has held six listening sessions with Great Falls, and in the spring of 2020, Great Falls began the engineering work on the site. At its most recent presentation, Great Falls Construction showed a draft design for the main parcel. They estimate it will take between three to five years to complete the entire project. There is more building demolition and cleanup to be done. Great Falls Construction's plans for the former prime tanning site will be presented to the planning board in the spring of 2021 with groundbreaking in the summer of 2021. Berwick is again on its way to becoming a thriving community.